think I got it working now. Uh, one second, one. see make sure this is going good okay hello everybody welcome back for our international tabletop day we are going to be currently playing a solo game with yours truly john timmy who you can find at the scrunnel gm podcast at the scrunnel gm podcast.com uh, unfortunately while i was searching around i could not find another player to be able to participate today uh, for the final game that I believe we're going to be playing for International Tabletop. Hi! How's it going, Andy? So, the game that we're going to be playing today is one of my all-time favorites. And it's something I'd love to have been able to showcase before at the ta on uh, the table. But I just never found the right opportunity. Maybe Halloween, maybe, I don't know, Bruce Lee's birthday. Just something that is very dear and near to my heart. We are going to be playing Ghost Stories. So, what is Ghost Stories? Ghost Stories is a one to four player cooperative board game where the objective of the game is we are going to be going through this deck of evil monsters that are all based on Chinese mythology. So, hold on one sec. So, we have a deck right here of some of the greatest looking baddie monsters I've ever seen. You're going to face things such as the black, oh, let me see if we can get there, the woman in black, or the scarlet evildoer, who will be coming out of this deck to haunt the village. The story goes that the village has been uh, securely protecting the ashes of a great demon known as, I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing it right, the avatar of Kwa Liang. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Let me just check. There's actually a full-on lore page if anyone wants me to read it. If anyone's interested. Oh, here we go. I can read the story right now for Ghost Stories of the Game. Give me one second. So, the story of Ghost Stories. Many fell, putting an end to the reign of the terrible Wu Fang, Lord of the Nine Hells. The funeral urn housing his ashes was buried in the cemetery of the village in the middle uh, in the middle empire. Years have elapsed, and the cursed legacy has been forgotten by the living. Hidden away in hell, Wu Fang has forgotten nothing. His incessant search allowed him to locate his uh, the receptacle. The shadow of his former incarnation already extends towards the village, who are unaware of the threat. Fortunately. The Fat Side, who are the mighty warrior monks who I am going to be using to try to win the campaign with. It's not a full on campaign, but it's a nice place to. These awesome battle monks. Hang on. There are four of them. And they are awesome. And each one is the same mold but of different colors. I will explain what each one of them does. They are going to be defending the village, fighting back the terrors of the evil Wu Fang until his final incarnation shows up in the deck and we are to fight him to the death. The game will end in a few ways possible. First, I'm going to show off some more of the unique factors of this game. So, I'm gonna transfer over to the overhead. Boom. You'll notice right here that these boards are four separate boards uh, surrounding this square-like area in the middle. These four boards represent the four colored warriors. Green, blue, red, and yellow. Each board is double-sided with different and unique powers to help us combat these evil monsters coming out of the woodwork to fight. But thankfully, we're not alone in this conquest as we also have the villagers. With the base game, you have access to the nine villager tiles, which include the following. We can stop by the Buddhist temple, where we can acquire unique remnants uh, of the Buddha to try to defend the village. We have, um, I believe this is, 
Yes. I believe this is the uh, witch's hut. I believe that might be the right term. I'll check that real quick. Yep, the sorcerer's hut, whose ability allows us to trade a little bit of our health to try to def uh, to kill a monster instantly. Very useful. We have access to what was it called? the Night Watch Band, which is extremely helpful. It allows you to move monsters around and repress evil spirits, which is so useful. I'll put that there. We have the Graveyard. One aspect of this game that I really enjoy is your characters can die, which is very, very dangerous. But if you're lucky enough to be able to pay the cost at the... Uh, at the cemetery, you can resurrect your dead comrades like nothing ever happened. Woo! Next, we have one of my favorite tiles of all time. I believe it's called, yep, it is the prayer circle. The prayer circle is very unique, and it has a unique ability I will get to soon. I'll place that there. Then right here, we have the herbalist shop, a very useful ability to be able to acquire more tokens rather than having to wait over time or win challenges to acquire them. Then we have, let's go with this one next. Uh, then we have the Pavilion of the Heavenly Winds. It allows me to move my, to uh, my units without having to worry about um, <coughs> it being their turn, as well as move monsters around, which can be super helpful in destroying creatures. Oh, yes. Now we have the Talus Altar. Very useful. It's able to basically... Hey, thanks for following Justin Sun uh, Guggen. That's really cool. Thank you, man. Welcome to the Twatch. Uh, it basically allows you to... Hold on. Yep. In exchange for allowing more monsters out of the bag, it allows us to... Uh, reverse Haunting, which I will get to in a minute. And the final one I want to show is the lovely tea shop. It lets you heal and lets you get tiles, but also causes more monsters to appear. And now I'm going to show you guys right here. This is the completed board with all of the tiles randomly arranged based on my pickings. Um, so in the game, the main, object the main thing we're going to be doing is as the four Taoist monks... We're going to be acquiring uh, tokens and fighting monsters who will be appearing based on their color and availability around these boards here. Either a yellow, uh, there will either be red, yellow, blue, or green. But they also might be black monsters, which are much harder to defeat and usually more of a pain. Uh, let me just set these down. The game also has a few other things. Uh, if we visit the Buddhist temple, like I had mentioned, there are these little useful Buddhas. Uh, we can use them back to basically stop monsters from spawning in certain locations, which is very helpful. And then we have, uh, I'll explain I guess really quick, the ways we can lose the game and the one way to win the game. We lose the game if every warrior is killed. We lose the game if Three tiles are haunted, which means they are flipped face down and the tile is useless. And finally, we can lose if we lose to, if uh, Zhang Shi arrives and we fail to defeat him before the deck is empty. The deck has an assortment of cards, but Zhang Shi is the first card and the last ten cards remaining in the deck. So it's kind of like facing the final boss in a video game. It's very thematic for me, and I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, and how haunting works is unique. Certain ghosts will appear that are haunters, and when they appear, I place a haunter marker, which is kind of hard to see right now because of the darkness. I'm actually going to see if... Hold on one sec. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let me just transfer over again. Might be able to get some light. Do not attempt at home, kids. There we go. Ah. 
Yeah, it's not bad. The glare's not bad on that, so that's pretty cool. All right. So these jumping, haunting monsters. Very scary. So essentially, each talus all ha also has its very unique ability. Uh, each power is double-sided, and I will explain each character right now. So, first off, we're going to start with Red. Red's ability is that I have chosen, he can move twice. Uh, so normally you're only allowed to move to one adjacent area, either diagonally or next to you. But he's basically able to go in completely around the entire board and be anywhere he needs to be. Next up we have Yellow. Yellow's unique ability I've chosen is he can pick one, towel, uh, one tile of his choice and he acquires them. So he's basically got empty pockets and able to carry as many tiles as he wants to, and he acquires one each turn. Green, who is extremely useful. He has the ability to never have to roll this evil curse die, which I will get to. And he gets a fourth die to roll for killing monsters. Yes, this game has its own little custom dice. And I will show them off here. They all have a side. Red, blue, white, yellow, and black, and green. So essentially, you're probably wondering, how do we defeat these mods? Oh, and finally, Blue's ability is my favorite out of all of them, and I like playing him the most. Uh, you can go, he's able to use a Tile's ability and attack a monster in the same turn. Very useful. So then, uh, yeah. So essentially, on my turn, what I'm going to be doing is moving these, uh, moving these creatures, uh, the heroes around to fight the spawn ghosts. So, as an example, right here I have this blue card, this uh, perf uh, perfidious nymph, which I'm able to spawn in any blue area. And as you can see on the card, it has one blue symbol. Essentially, if I want to defeat this blue creature, I would need to be in front of it directly, and then I roll the three dice allotted me, except for green, who's able to roll this fourth die that is the same. And I need to get as many blue symbols as there are on the card to defeat it. So I got two blue symbols, so I could defeat this creature, and it goes in a discard pile. Doesn't seem so bad, now does it? However, these creatures are insane. Some of them have things such as four symbols or multicolor symbols. And of course, I had mentioned before the dread black symbols. Oh, the black symbols. These cards are usually the most terrifying creatures in the deck. You do not want to face them. Other things to consider are, if a hero is ever overwhelmed, meaning there's more creatures in their area than you are able to defeat, they take damage. Everyone starts the game with four life, and once you hit zero life, you are out. Also, things to consider. I start the game with each character having a black and a blue token, and a Talus token. I can spend this Talus token at any time to flip over any haunted space. I will also explain these creatures' abilities when they come into play, but for now, we're going to begin the game, and I hope you guys enjoy a good ghost story. This game is extremely hard, and I hope you enjoy it if I start enjoying it myself. Now then, uh, this is a different variant than normal solo rules. Normal solo rules say that you only play red, and then you use tokens to designate using different abilities. But this is the way I enjoy playing it solo, and I find it to be very enticing. So I hope you guys enjoy Ghost Stories. So to start off, I have to do it in the following order. I flip over one card, and the first card we get is a black card, a Black Widow. Now then, on her card you can see, I'm going to transfer over again guys, sorry for the jarring transfers. You can see that she has uh, a symbol at the bottom of her card. This means I cannot use tokens until I defeat her. Tokens can basically be used to substitute symbols. 
And when I defeat her, I have to roll the black curse die, but then I acquire a reused symbol card uh, or a token of, uh, or, um, sorry, uh, a health symbol of my choice. And I can go above my starting health, which is very helpful. But the way it works is she would go to the player who she was going to be, uh, whose turn it was, and goes to their area. So I'm going to have her go to red, because I'm going to have it be red's turn. Now then, red has the following options. He can move, then use an area, or attack the monster. So the monster has two black symbols, so I would need to roll two dice and get two black symbol and two black symbols on it. But I also have a token, so I can use that instead. So what I'm going to be doing this turn is I'm going to actually try to fight this monster. So I'm going to move red over to this area, directly in front of the black creature, the uh, black widow. And I'm going to roll these dice and hope to God that I get a black symbol or a white symbol, which can be used as a, a wild color. So unfortunately, I failed the roll, which means I do not get anything. And now it is, unfortunately, the next player's turn in the game. This game is incredibly difficult, but it's a lot of fun. So, blue once again goes, uh, no, yep, it would go green now. So let's see what green gets. Oh no, it's another black creature. Uh, this creature is a gloomy minion. Its ability is, it's a haunter, and it forces, at, when it comes out, it forces all other hunters to show up. However, since it's the only haunter on the board, it doesn't affect that. And when I slay it, I will acquire uh, a token. So how haunters work is, I'm going to place this haunter pawn on the card. Now, at the start of the player's turn, the haunter's on. That haunter token will move up. And then on the next time, it will move up again and flip the tile in front of it. And the next time after that, it will flip another one and another one. The only way to stop the haunting is to kill the creature. So this is Green's turn, so I'm actually going to send Green over to this area. Actually, I'm going to send Green over to help Red. A unique thing that this game allows is, uh, well not really 100% unique, but a fun thing it allows is you're able to share tokens with allies in the same space and roll with them for benefits, which is very good. And green is a great one to fight this black widow creature because he never rolls the black curse die, so it's very useful. So, he gets his fourth die, and I roll again. I got two black symbols and a white symbol, so I immediately slay this creature. So that's one down. A heck of a lot more to go through, guys. Uh, but, because I slay the creature, I don't roll the black die because of the, uh, green's ability. But I also acquire another health token. So I will give that to green. And that is the end of his turn. The next player in lineup is going to be blue. So I'm going to flip over blues. Oh my goodness. More creatures. And this one has four black symbols. Oh god. The Soul Eater. So the Soul Eater's ability is pretty much uh, every character in the game now loses one token. So I lose all of these. I'm going to take all the multicolored tokens out because the rest of the characters need their tokens. The black tokens to fight these creatures. Uh, then I'm going to... Nutter butter. Then, unfortunately, this creature forces uh, the blue player to roll the black curse die. The curse die is not fun. Basically, it has two blank sides, which are good. A symbol that will summon a ghost. Uh, I'll flip this over so you guys can see. A symbol that will summon a ghost. A symbol that will immediately haunt a tile. A symbol that will cost me health. Or a symbol that means I lose all of my tokens immediately. So, let me just make sure that I'm correct on that. Yep. So, here it goes. Oh no, we got a haunted tile. That is not good. Okay. Blue needs to do things right now. So, what Blue is going to do, he is going to move to the sorcerer's house. And he is going to use the sorcerer's house 
paying a key to be able to immediately kill this demon. Unfortunately, he gets no reward for doing so. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have had that on. I'll redo that. So yeah, he goes to the sorcerer's house. He pays one health to immediately slay the demon. Uh, but he gets none of the rewards that would come with that. So that is the trade-off he gets. But thankfully, that thing is dead. So that's very good. Next up, let's see what Yellow has to deal with. First. Okay, so Yellow got a different color. Unfortunately, it's another four. But it is the Fury of Death. It is a four blue symbol, so I need four blue symbols to be able to defeat it. So, Yellow has the unique ability, though, to acquire any color token it wants at the start of its turn. So, I'm going to have Yellow acquire another black token. Oh, goodness. Hang on one second. Oh, no, all black tokens are currently in use, so I cannot get that. So I'll have him acquire a blue token. And then I'm going to do the same as I did before. And I'm going to have him uh, attempt to immediately... Actually, I'm going to have him face off against the ghoul. Because the ghoul is a problem, and if I defeat it, I get another token back. So I'm going to have him attack the ghoul. Okay. He got one black symbol, which kills the ghoul. So, I've gone through three creatures. I'm down one health and about four tokens. And I've gone through one round of turns. I love this game actually quite a lot. It's the right amount of random chance and feeling like an awesome hero to be extremely pleasurable, even if you are looking down impossible odds. It's really, really enchanting. I love it. So then, that is the end of Yellow's turn. Now it's going to be Red's turn again. And Red draws the Nymph card I had shown off earlier. And this Nymph has a unique ability. It summons another ghost immediately, which is just divine. So let's see what we got. Okay, we got a Yellow Ghoul. This Ghoul is a Haunter, so it spawns a Haunter token. This is not the end of the world, though, so that's really good. So, what Red is going to do is, he's going to use his ability to fly, and he is going to attempt to... I have to put that curse marker there. He's going to aim to... Uh, let me see. Hang on one sec, guys. i got to ponder it. All right, what Yellow's going to do is he's going to stand here on the Sorcerer's spot. And I'm just going to abuse this as much as I can. Spending a key to slay this Fury Nymph. All right, that's his move. Now it is the green player's turn. Green has drawn the Abyss, uh, the Abysmal. The Abysmal means when it's defeated, it doesn't give me a reward, it gives me a punishment. Which makes it so I cannot, I have to roll the black guy. Thankfully, it is Green's turn. So if he could get there, it'd be very useful. But unfortunately, Green is too far away to reach that creature before Blue can. So, what I'm going to have Green do is, I'm going to have Green help out the future. So green is going to be at this space, which allows me to move any ghost anywhere. Uh, it also allows me to move uh, any hero one space. Since blue's turn is next, I'm going to have a move blue here, to the Buddhist temple. So he can fight the abyss a little. Yes, and use the Buddha's power, which is very useful. Actually, I'm going to set it up for the future. I'm going to have it move red this way. And then it is blue's turn. So blue flips the next card, guys. Oh, it's a green haunter. That is not good. 
Let's see how this goes. All right, there are two haunters on the board, and there's already one haunted tile. This is not good. Okay. So, blue is going to move to this area here. And blue is going to use the ability to grab a Buddha statue. What this allows him to do is he's allowed to put a Buddha anywhere on the space that's free and play it down. I'll have him lay it in this area. If a card spawns that should go to that area or could go to that area, the Buddha immediately destroys it. Very useful ability. It just cannot beat the final boss immediately. But it's very good. So, what I'm going to have blue do is blue is going to go with yellow. And because we're on a corner for the board this time, blue is able to do attack both. So if he gets enough green symbols and enough blue symbols, he could slay both. However, I do not believe that to be the case, but it's very good to think that. All right, here we go. Ooh, guys, I have a hard choice to do. Okay, I have enough symbols to kill either one, but only one. So I can either kill... Oh, no! Actually, yellow has a blue, so I can slay both. So I will slay this creature immediately. There's one less Haunter on the board. And I'll spend the token to slay this Abyssal. But unfortunately, the Abyssal forces me once again to roll the black die. But let's hope. Pray for me, guys. Pray for me. Oh, no. Oh, that is not good. All right, so blue, unfortunately, I believe, loses all the tokens that he has acquired. However, I think he only had one token, so it might not be that bad. Oh? Uh, yes, he loses all the tokens he had acquired, so he loses his one black token. But that is not the worst thing that could have happened, so I'm very happy with that result. Next player's turn is yellow. Yellow flips the next card, and his Haunter moves up one space. Okay. Uh, it is a Rotten Soul, which is a green card. <coughs> so now Yellow has some choices to make. What color does he want to acquire? He cannot reach this area as of yet, but he can reach this one. So I'm going to have to take another blue token, move over to this area, and it does not matter what he rolls, because he'll kill it no matter what. If he gets a blue or a white, he just saves the token. You got two blues. This purified demon is dead. Oh, okay. I want to say that I've been very lucky right now, but things are going to get hard worse before they get better. That's how this game usually goes. Oh, boy. It is exciting. Okay. The next player to go is red. So red flips the card. Oh, no. It is the Black Widow. Oh, no. Oh yes, it is the Black Widow. So, it goes into any area that I can fit it, uh, and it locks all tokens. So the only way to beat it is with dice. That is very difficult. So we're going to aim to do that, though. Uh, black cannot really help her. Nutter butter. Okay, so everyone has three health except for uh, yellow and have three health, so it might be worth it just to do it again. Just so I don't have to deal with that. I'll have green do that, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move red here and have him attempt to slay this ghoul. Red has two yellow symbols, so the ghoul is slain. We have gotten through. Four, Eight horrifying monsters, but there's still more to come. Now, it is Green's turn. Green flips. Oh, it is Stinky Feet! Stinky, stinky feet! A horrifying haunter monster. I'll put that there. I didn't want to use the Buddha in case something else that was big and blue was going to show. So, I'm good with that call. But Green is going to move to this area here, he's going to spend the key he got earlier to instantly slay the Widow Monster. Okay, 
And now, it is Blue's turn. Blue draws. Oh my goodness. I'm going to just show you guys this one. We have the Raging Ogre. A four red, and it rolls a black die each red player's turn. That is horrifying. Truly terrifying. So I'm going to move that to this area. And then, Blue has some choices to make. He doesn't have the health that Green had. And there still is a haunted area on the board. So, what I'm going to have Blue do is... Blue... I'll ask you guys, does anyone have an idea of where I should send Blue currently? Or want to give any input whatsoever? Because I want to see if anyone has an opinion. Okay. Hmm. Not seen currently, so I'm going to assume for now that either you are contemplating quite a bit or I'm playing once again full on solo. So I'm just going to make this decision for now, but in the future I'll ask if you guys have any opinions on the terms. So I'm going to be moving blue. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard because I want him to be able to not have to rely on that tile so much. But it's so good. But I think I'm going to have him go back, spend the key, and just slay the ogre before it becomes a problem. Uh, yes, that was Blue's turn. Oh, and the Stinky Feet, unfortunately, do move up on the haunting track. Okay, now it is... Yellow's turn again. Oh, yellow. Oh, yellow. Yellow is going to acquire... Well, first yellow is going to draw a card. Scarlet Evildoer. That is another Haunter. I need that Guardsman tile, I think, back, guys. Because that looks dangerous. So, what I'm going to have yellow do is... I was first going to acquire a red tile. Be able to slay that creature. Then yellow is going to spend one of his one of the four the game's four yin yang symbols, which reveals an unhaunted tile. Then yellow is going to attempt to slay the stinky feet monster. And unfortunately, yellow does not have the sim. Oh, wait, he does have the symbols. He had the blue. So he slays Stinky Feet. Okay, now it is Red's turn. Red draws. Another Scarlet Evil Doer. That, that's, that's not good. Red is haunted. Red is haunted. Red needs to get a move on. So I'm going to have Red fly over to. Uh, what's the better one? Red's gonna fly over to this location, guys. And Red is going to attempt to slay this one. He needs three reds or whites to beat this thing. He was so close! Oh no! Oh, that stinks. Okay. Now it's Green's turn. Green draws. Oh no. That is not good. So green drew uh, the fallen minions, and until they are slain, I cannot use my powers. And he also plays another card. That is a relentless doubt. Uh, that is a relentless dead. That is another haunter. Also, this haunter should be moved up. Okay. Green's got some choices to make, and I think the choice is obvious. Slay the thing that keeps him from using powers. Green has slain the Fallen Ones. And now powers are back on the board, guys. Oh, sorry. Yellow needs to go over here. All right. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Blue's turn. 
Ooh, this is the reason I, I have this card, the, the token set up. The Shapeless Evil, a four black card, but I had a Buddha. So the Buddha is traded off and kills the Shapeless Evil immediately. So we are good against that evil thing that would have immediately haunted things and made my life much worse. So what Blue is going to do is Blue is going to move to this tile and use his ability to immediately push all Haunters back. And that, I think, is what Blue's going to do for his turn. Yellow goes. Oh, no. So, this is a Reaper. And what it does is it can only be killed by, uh, I think, either... It's either killed only by Dice Rolls or it can only be killed by Symbols. Yes. The only way to slay that creature is with Symbols. So, what Yellow is going to do, and this moves up, Yellow is going to move to this area, the circle which i love so what the circle's ability is i take any token from the box and now everything of that color has its hardness reduced by one so now uh it doesn't matter what i roll against the reaper and these are reduced by two a very useful power next up guys we got red so both of these move up and unfortunately red is about to be overwhelmed so i flip the card Oh no, it's a repetitive beauty. And unfortunately, just as a clarification, I'm going to check the rules in real quick. I believe, overrun. Oh yes, so, hold on. All three ghost spaces in the board are occupied at the beginning of this turn. The player loses one key and does not perform step three. So there's no ghost for him, but he takes a damage, which is very bad. Red is not looking so hot, guys. So what red is going to do, red is going to fly over to here. He's going to instantly kill that demon. Because it doesn't matter what his dice roll, because it's reduced by one. And since dice do not matter anyway, it needed zero dice, so it's immediately killed. I think that's my logic for that. So yeah, that should work. But now it's Green's turn. And Green has the Repentant uh, Beauty. And that locks a die. So we lose one die, it cannot be killed by dice, and if it's slain, we get things. So Green is going to try to kill this guy. And Green is going to roll, and it doesn't really matter, because he has to spend his token. But the demon is dead. Okay, next is Blue's turn. Blue will flip a card. Oh goodness. It is another haunter on red. I'm gonna play Fallon Duke. So that is not good. That is going to be overwhelmed again unless something is done, guys. So what Blue is going to do is he's going to use his ability again and push these back. And this one as well. And that is his turn, guys. Then it's yellow. Oh, yellow draws a shape, sharp nailed mistress. So, just to clarify. Okay, since I drew a red card with the yellow player. And there's no more space in red. It goes onto his board, and that uh, shapeless nail, uh, the sharp nailed woman, uh, forces him to draw another card, which is a zombie. So, what he is going to do, he's going to move over to this area. He's going to, for his power, grab another tile. He'll get yellow this time, and he's going to roll against this area here. And hopefully he has enough to slay both creatures. Okay, he has enough. With, oh, oh. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter because that was the third dice anyway. So, what he does is, he uses the red to slay this creature. And he uses the, ye the blank and the yellow tile to slay the zombie. But unfortunately, it means he has to roll the curse. 
Oh no. The tunnel he is on is haunted. There's one more haunt, guys. Oh, that ain't good. I hope everybody who's watching is enjoying International Tabletop Day, because I certainly am. Whew. Okay. It is now the red player's turn, and he has not overrun, so he will not lose a key. Oh no, but blue has a liquid horror. Oh, the humanity. It's so terrifying. That is not good. Okay, red has to start doing things, because his board is getting overrun pretty good. So, what is red going to do? He's going to go to this area here because he knows that blue has got his back with this haunting business so he's going to use his ability and attack this creature yes he slays her and then it is on to green green draws a card oh no it's a severed head guys and it forces green to lose a die and draw another ghost Oh, and it's a yellow monster that has so much stuff going on. The humanity. Okay, so Green is going to slay this creature. And he does. He has enough dice. Gets the die back. He slays this creature. And he uh, gets a token, which is a good reward for him. I'm going to have him grab, since he's been sticking over there, I'm going to have him grab a green token. Just to be safe. Next is the Blues player's turn. So he draws. It's a green cursed monster. So he'll send it over there. Now he's going to once again push back all the hauntings. So everything that's haunted is over there. And now he's going to attempt to kill this liquid horror. Which he has no chance of doing. Unfortunately he fails. But he had a good roll. Next it is yellow. Yellow's haunter moves up. He flips a card. It is a... It is a... Blood Drinker Monster, which is very dangerous. And it moves over to Red's area. And the Blue Drinker will also have a Cursed Eye roll when it's slain. Alright, what Yellow needs to do... Yellow needs to kill stuff before Red starts his turn. So I'm going to require the second Red card. And he does not actually have his Talus token, so he cannot flip this tile. He's going to attempt to kill... Mm. He's going to move actually over here, and he's going to slay this demon, no matter what I think. Because it's reduced by one, and it has t and he has two red tokens, so... Yeah, and he only has to spend... And he doesn't have to spend a token. He just kills it. So good on you, yellow dude. Next it is Red's turn, and Red must draw. And now Green is in trouble, because Green is filled up. So that is not good. Ooh. This is the point in the game where you realize that you're in trouble. But thankfully, guys, we're about halfway through the deck. So, there's always a bright side. What Red is going to do... He is going to fly over here, and he's going to attempt to, no, if he fights that cursed creature, he's a black die. So green is next. Green can take a hit, I believe. I think he can take a hit. But we got to get through the deck as fast as possible. It stinks. All right, blue has two health, red has two health, yellow has four health, green has four health. What I want Red to actually do is, Red's going to do something a little, a little crazy. He's going to go to the tea house and enjoy himself a nice roast of tea. He's going to get a health back and he's going to get a token. I'm going to give him Red. The trade-off being, he's going to summon another monster because he was enjoying tea. And he drew a red card. He deserves it for sitting on tea. Now it is Green's turn, and Green will take a hit. Now, Green is going to attempt to slay this creature here. So he's going to take his four dice and roll. 
And he does it, barely does it. Oh, he spends the token, he uses the yellow, and he slays this monster, and he does not roll the curse die. So good for him. Now it is Blue's turn. Blue flips his tile. Oh no. Oh no, it's a coffin breaker. And it summons another ghost. And you cannot use your powers this turn. It summons another green creature. This is not good. This is not good. Okay. Hail Mary time. I'm going to use blue again to push back the haunters. Because if those two get out, it's game over. But unfortunately, it's yellow. And yellow must now spend a token. A key. Uh, yellow will get back a yellow token. So he's going to move over to this area and attempt on these two. So at this point, it's foolhardy not to. Okay, he got a white, he got a yellow, and he got a black. So he's going to slay this great cloak to breaker. The black does nothing. And he'll spend a black token and a white to slay this bloodsucker. And he's going to pray on the black die not to roll anything. And he loses another key. Oh my goodness, this is so hard. We're almost through, We're almost through. All right, red player draws a card. Oh, moves up, moves up. Red player draws. Oh. It was a very close game, guys. But unfortunately, I just drew a Dark Wraith card. And the Dark Wraith forces all the jumping spirits to move up ahead. So that unfortunately, that haunts this area and this area, which means I really should have used my token before I had thought of that. So unfortunately, the game is very hard, but it's very, very fun. But yeah, unfortunately, I got overwhelmed by the Dark Ray, and I didn't even get to see. I want to know how close I was. Oh god, I wasn't that close at all. I still had at least 12 more demons to get through. But man, for a game that makes you feel like a kung fu, crazy, martial artist, awesome fighter, it's fun solo, and it's extremely fun with a bunch of people screaming at each other. You go this way, this way, this way, this way. No, what are you doing over there? Stop using the same power over and over again. Ah! But yeah. All in all, this game is one of my favorite co-op games of all time, and I look forward to playing it again, hopefully with everybody here on stream. So yeah, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it, uh, and I hope to see you guys again for, I think, next year's, uh, for next year's International Tabletop Day. I unfortunately think it's about time I wrap it up, because this was my plan for a solo game, but if you guys are all interested, make sure to let everyone know that we want more ghost stories. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great night, and I'm going to set off for the night. Play more games, everyone. And you can find me again at the Disgruntled GM Podcast at disgruntledgmpodcast.com. So, hold on one second. Yes, here we go. So, yes, once again, thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the game. It's a goodie. It's really fun. And I will catch you guys next time. See you on Friday for Star Wars. Later.